Uh, hello everyone. So today we'll discuss about neural architecture search. So before that, like uh, we want to discuss like, how a CNN architecture is defined and what it will do. As we can see in this VGG network, we have different type of layers and these different type of layers will learn different things. So like the first layers will learn about the edges, about the curves in the picture. So these information will feed into the next layers. So next layer will learn more general things until the last we will learn like what is the car look like or what is the building look like. So we use like different type of filters for here. So you will you will see like this input image is at 24, uh, 224 by 224 into 3. And when we'll move further, we'll see we have like different filters. So it will increase the dimensionality of the output. So these filters are called the operations. So like one of the operation is convolution plus ReLU. Another one is max pooling. Then we will use some fully connected plus ReLU. And in the last we will use the soft max. So we have seen like in the inception network. What they have done, they have created the blocks. So the blocks are created using different type of operators. So operators like convolution, different convolutions, max pooling. So they have created a block of like one by one, three by three, five by five. So these block then further connected. So these block repeatedly connected to itself to create the whole network. So the network is created. Uh, so network is consists of blocks and blocks are consists of operators. So that's how we create like this big architecture of inception network. We will discuss what there is a concept of transfer learning. So what will happen in transfer learning? So they will freeze the first layers and they will freeze the first layers and only train the last few layers to classify for your own task. So now what happen if we'll see here. So these layer have already learned about the lines, edges and those things. So more general things like if we want to train for to classify between cats and dogs. For that case, we only want two classes. So for structure of cats are also made of different edges and lines. So how they are combined with each other, these we can train in our last few layers. So we use transfer learning here, but transfer learning have one drawback. So it will not learn the task specific thing. So uh, what I mean by task specific thing is like, it will not if we are doing for like face recognition. So it will not learn like how the face shape information. So these will not embed in our layers. So we need to train particular networks for that only. So we have to create our own network, we have to train our own network. So their transfer learning will fail. So in that cases, like I have shown you, like for inception network, we have different type of filters here. So these filters will create the uh, block and that blocks are further created the network. So in transfer learning, like we, uh, we will create a model for one task and we can do the knowledge transfer and use the whatever the learning have done by model A for the model B. So in model B it's just basically the model A only they have only if we have like 18 layers then they have freeze the first 16 layer and only train the last two layers for their own task. So they have done this type of transfer learning. But as I have discussed like in some cases we need to train our own model. So for that case we need to first create our model. So for models are created from different layers. So if we are creating our own network architecture then what will happen then we should know like how these layers should combine with each other. Like what will be the effect of filters to the input layers. So these things we should know and sometimes it's just a hit and trial because most of the networks they have created they, uh, these are done after so much so many experimentations. So it's not an easy task to find a new network. So what will happen if we will do this automatically. So there this network architecture search will help us. It will search in the each permutation and combinations of these different type of operators and blocks and it will find you a network which will be give you the best result on your task. Like we have like different this whole search space of model is there and we tried each not each and every but we had tried some of those models and it will give you the best model out of that search space. So let's see like how it's worked. So controller what it will do it will do it will propose a configuration of a network 
and these child networks will train on our cipher 10 subset of data set and then we will do the accuracy check on our validation data after the whatever the accuracy will come will pass as a reward to our controller so controller will see that reward so if the accuracy is highest then the reward is highest so it will change our change its policy or change its network in a way so that next time it will give you a better network configuration so so that you will get a good validation score so like i show you a controller is giving you the sample models we can do like not only for the accuracy we can also do for the latency so we can propose a network which should be faster also so now the reward function is combination of both accuracy and latency so it will give a reward in a combination of both so now the controller task is to propose a network which will not only highly accurate but also much faster so before that like we had to discuss about something about the reinforcement learning loop so i will not go into the deep but only will tell you like how what are the different component of reinforcement learning so in reinforcement learning what will happen so it will have different states and the agent will go from one state to another state so here our agent is the controller which is the rna network and it will go from one state to another state so that means it will go from one block to another block so these combination of block will give us the network so that its task is to choose only those states which will give us the highest accuracy so here reward is the accuracy which is the validation accuracy so action here it's the proposing of the networks so that we will train on those networks and we will find like which one is the best as i show you like our controller is a rna network so in the input layer it will take the input as the hyper parameters so hyper parameters here also have like how much deep we want our network what time we want to complete this the training part of that and the action it will propose the network so it will propose like which block they should use how much filter size you should use and those things are passed create a configuration of a network then this child network will train on the sample training data set and will test on the validation data set and whatever the accuracy will come we will pass that as a reward so this reward will taken to the rna network and it will update its weights so these weights will updated so now in the next iteration so in the next time stamp the rna network will propose those action which will be giving you a better network configuration so as i show you like as i told you like uh, the network whole network is consists of cells so different cells are there and those cells are consists of blocks so blocks are further came from the operators so here we have like different operators are there like 1 by 1 2 by 2 3 by 3 different type of filters and with uh, different type of shapes i have shown you like uh, these whole network is consists of different cells so each cell are consists of like five blocks so these five block output will concatenate and then it will give it to the further layers so within each block we have different operators so these operators are like 3 by 3 5 by 5 depth wise convolutions identity convolutions different type of operators are there and the input 1 and input 2 is transformed by these operators so input 1 will be the previous layer output and input 2 will be the previous to previous layer output so that uh, those skip connection concepts can also be applied here so these will combine to give us a block output and those block outputs those five block outputs will further concatenate to give us the cell output and those cells will again concatenate to give us the whole network so this network architecture search will happen then it will give you a output as what should be the filter height filter width what should be the stride height stride width how many number of filters we should use so this is the output given by our controller so this output will taken and we will create a network according to this output and that network will train and then validate it then whatever the accuracy is coming that will give us a reward to the controller so now it will change these weights so that it will give us a better architecture so as i telling you like there are controller are there and we are also doing whatever the child networks are coming we are training that also so this is like pseudo code for that so controller epochs having like 2000 epochs and child epochs having like 100 so for each controller epoch like each time step it will give you a child model so it will generate a child model and that child model will train for like 100 epochs and whatever the after training that for 100 epochs 
we will see what is the, its validation accuracy. That accuracy will be used to change the controller parameters. So in that next epoch, it will again create a child model and that child model accuracy again validation accuracy will be evaluated and then we will again do the same process. So this process will do for like 2000 epochs. In the last, we will just select the model which having the highest validation accuracy. So you can see like these having like two for loops here. So as you can see like this is a very time consuming process like for the original NAS they have used around 800 K40 GPUs for around 28 days. And another thing also like these network whatever the network coming from the NAS are very much quite similar to the architecture we already have. They are using like whatever the architecture we have like ResNet. We know that these networks are capable of because after so many experimentation we have found uh, ResNet and Inception uh, networks. So whatever the networks which are creating because the search space is quite wide so we have to limit it that otherwise it will not be done in 28 days also. So there are alternate algorithm are proposed to speed up the NAS. Uh, so these have used some different type of techniques like here we are in the NAS original NAS we are using the reinforcement learning. Uh, one more algorithm is there which is PNAS which is progressive neural architecture search which will do the prediction of the performance of the block cells instead of predicting the whole network. And it is also not doing, it's also not using reinforcement learning. It's only using dummy models which will train to predict these performance of block cells much better in, in a progressive way. And there is one more variant of NAS which is ENS which will do the weight sharing among the candidate networks for faster performance in every controller epoch a child model is proposed then that child model it will take in that child model and it will do the training on that then it will find the what will be the accuracy on the validation data set and if it will not find that it having very good validation accuracy then we will throw that model so here what they have proposed like instead of throwing that model we will use the weights of that for the next model so because we had done some training on that this will give a much better performance than the original NAS. So as you can see like these type of different architecture are proposed by the NAS like NASNet, eNASNet, ZNet. This is the ResNet model. So you can see like this crazy different type of network architecture have searched by NAS. Uh, I don't think like any human can propose this type of architecture. Here are some results. You can see like not only go for the error but also see what will be the GPU cost and the time consume for training these networks. So you can see like original NAS having 800 GPUs for 28 days. Then it has giving some error around 4.4. But you can also see these E and E NAS, P NAS, progressive NAS, which are much faster than the original NAS. Like this E NAS can taking only one GPU for half an day and it will give you the same performance as other alg algorithms. I think I have done with all the slides. So thank you for your time. Uh, and I will surely will discuss another exciting topic for the next video. Till then, see you.